Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Keisha Smith. I am the Economic Development Coordinator here for the City of Saginaw. Um, we work with small businesses located in the City of Saginaw. I'm glad to see that we have some um, businesses on here tonight that are not in the city. So even if you're not in the city, you can take advantage of our resources and these workshops and things like that that we offer. So we're glad to have you on tonight, Ms. Tammy. <laughs> and um, we will look forward to working with you in any way we can in the future, maybe providing some other resources of some sort. Um, so we are, tonight is our third session. So um, this is our final session on tonight, but again, this session will be recorded. Um, so you'll have the opportunity to see the replay um, as well as you will receive the replay from us. And it's posted on the city's website um, under the Saginaw Economic Development Corporations page. Um, we have several products. We have our micro loans and our macro loans um, still going forward and funds are available to lend. So if anybody is in need of funding, definitely give me a call or um, shoot me an email. Um, my email address is ksmith at saginaw-mi.com, and I'll put that in the comments as well. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and let Ms. Charlene go ahead and get started on tonight. While she's uh, giving me access, does anyone else have a business um, that's up and functioning that they'd like to share that we can come patronize or support? I'll share. Uh, my name is Tanisha Brooks. I am the owner of Trinity Creations Photography. It is a brick and mortar photography studio in down Old Town Saginaw. Awesome. I think I've seen some of your advertisements. Yeah, well, give that a tap, please. Um, so I am Two doors down from Drunken Monkey Tattoo. I'm on Hamilton Street ah, on the corner of Hamilton and Van Buren. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Tanisha. You're Thank welcome. you for joining us. Anyone else before we dive in? I mean, it's only a handful of us. If we had like 30 people, we wouldn't go through. <laughs> we wouldn't be like, hey, let's plug your business. But, um, Anybody I don't know else want to share? Me or if everybody was on, but I'm Dawn, and I can put this on real quick. I'm Dawn. I'm from Dawn of a New Day Coffee House. We have um, happily located in downtown Saginaw for 16 years now. We start out in a humble little cafe area in the Behringer Building. And we moved to uh, 210 South Washington in 2008, and we've been there since. Um, we're just happy that we survived that we in our building now, and we live on top of it. And um, uh, the struggle's real. We know that. and um, But we've been able to... Uh, you know, move through it. So we're always happy to encourage others to be able to do together and encourage one another. So um, anyway, I'm Dawn. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dawn. And now that you mentioned that you were in the Behringer building, I have patronized your establishment before. Many, many, many years ago when I used to um, get my hair done over that way by the um, behind the hat shop by Schaefer's, behind Schaefer's. And um, my cousin is, was a seamstress, and she her shop was in the Behringer building, Renee. Uh, so, yeah, I have patronized you before, just a very long time ago. Thank you for sharing. All right, you guys, uh, without further ado, 625, we're going to dive into it. I'm going to start off with just a recap. Um, I didn't want to assume that everyone had seen the previous two presentations, so we're just going to do a Brief recap, this is going to be a really high level overview, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking at you guys tonight. We're going to spend the bulk of our time actually in the templates that we have provided to you. 
It's a lot of information, but I am hoping that you'll find that the templates that we have provided are user friendly. So with that having been said, let me share my screen. Welcome to the third webinar in our series of budgeting and finance 101 for small business owners. Again, like I said, I am Charlene Orange and I will be your instructor for this evening. Quick recap, I received my bachelor's in electrical engineering from the University of Michigan, second bachelor's in psychology uh, from Clayton State University in Georgia. Have over 20 years of data analysis experience in various fields, numbers. It's uh, what I do, what I enjoy, and I love helping people. So this is a great opportunity for me. In the first series, we just went over the importance of knowing your numbers, the first workshop in the series. In the second series, we dove into the budget sheet and how to use that. And in this workshop, we are going to do an overview of financial forecasting, and we're going to walk through a financial forecasting template that we have provided to you guys earlier. What we learned so far, again, is what you need in order to accurately account for your, your business income and what's going in and what's coming out. Once again, that's your budget, what you should track, which is pretty much everything going in and coming out, and how to use Excel, even though we know that there are other programs such as QuickBooks, and, and lots of people love QuickBooks, and we might do something on that in the future, but just to keep it budget friendly and free for everyone, we decided to use Excel, so that's what we have learned so far. This webinar series is good for anyone at any phase of business operation, whether you're planning, whether you're established and you're a vet, whether you're new to it. This is information that's useful for anyone. <clears throat> really important for a business plan. Um, you would be ahead of the game with having this information with getting started with your business plan. So good for all. Quick recap. Very, very quick. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide. The budgeting and finance spreadsheet that we provided to you all really may, lays the foundation for everything we've done up to this point, and especially tonight. There are four things you need for your budget sheet, and that's a business checking account, invoice, sales receipts, all documentation of expenses, a filing system, and the tools, which is either Microsoft Excel or other accounting software such as QuickBooks. Don't be afraid bookkeeping budget tracking actually all that we're doing is simple math the tools do the the complex things for you especially with the the forecasting it's a bit more complicated than what we've done so far but the template that we've provided does all of that work for you if you have quickbooks i believe they have those tools available where it, if you put in additional or certain information that it can generate some of these things for you as well um, your business is your baby. You can do this. And I've already said that the budget sheet lays the foundation for all of the things we've done up to this point. We've talked about why budget tracking is important, helps you manage your income, account for everything going in, know the financial status and health of your business. So you know what funds you have available, you know if there's an emergency, if something comes up, you know what you're able to do. If you need to buy new equipment, hire a new employee, you know where you stand if you keep up with your bookkeeping. So this is the budget tracking template that we provided to you guys previously. Anyone not familiar with this or haven't had a chance to look at this? I haven't had time to look at it yet. Okay, but it'll be there whenever you're ready. Yeah, whenever you're ready. <laughs> and um, so if anyone has any questions on this, I'm not going to spend any time on this tonight. I just wanted to show it to you and let you guys know that it's available. I will put my email information in the chat. So at any point, even well after this webinar series is over, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I will respond and do whatever I can to help. So this is the yearly overview here. 
This is the monthly overview. This is what you actually update every month. So what is financial forecasting? It is the process of estimating or predicting how a business will perform in the future. So it's, it's great that we're all open, you know, that businesses open up and we get started and it's all lovely, but a lot of times you can't stop there. You need to plan for the future. Where do you wanna be in a year? How are you gonna grow your business? Where do you wanna be in five years? What's the end goal? And this is also important, very, very important when you're trying to secure funds from say a bank, if you want a small business loan, or if you're trying to get a grant or a micro loan from an organi organization such as the SEDC, they're gonna require some financial forecasting information many times if you have not been established for a while because they want an, investors wanna know why should they invest in you? What's your plan in the, in the future? Do you, you know, how, how do you plan on growing the business? How is this gonna be a profitable investment for them? So it's um, really important for that matter. Again, I just touched on that. It helps you to set goals and benchmarks and it allows you to create a financial plan to secure funds. You can set goals, but it's mo setting goals without a plan is, is just a wish or a dream. I think we, I don't know if that's quite the quote, but you all know what I'm getting at. So I want to touch on the difference between the financial forecast and budgeting because the financial forecast has a few parts. And like I said, the foundation is the budgeting. But let's just kind of make a distinction here the business budget you set aside money for your cost and is based on what's happening right now your budget is what's happening right now the forecast is a prediction of what we said a plan for the future where you'd like to go where you see yourself going so i mean it's it's pretty straightforward but that's that's just the difference even though the forecast does take information from the budgeting it takes it further so really quick, six steps to financial forecasting. Here's what's going to happen, and we'll get into more detail in this. You are projecting your spending and sales, the cost of goods sold, employees. You're going to project a lot of times based on history, based on past history. But if you're a new business owner, if you're creating a budget, I mean, a, a business plan, to open your business, then you're going to do some research to find out what the costs all are involved for the type of business that you are planning to start. You're gonna use that information to create projections. I think I can sell, you know, I usually sell 50 cups in a month. I expect that I can grow that by 10%, that type of thing. You're going to also use this to determine your financial needs. You know, I have two employees now, but as my business grows, I may find that I need to add additional employees. That's something that you, an example of one thing that you would take into consideration and use that for planning. You also will use this to plan for contingencies. Like I stated before in a previous, in the previous workshop, say you have an emergency, say you're a baker and your commercial grade oven breaks down. You need to have some money set aside to be able to handle those types of emergencies. And then once you've got your forecast and you're planning on together, you want to monitor it and track yourself and see how well you're doing and make adjustments as needed. So it's not just for funding. It's also for you. So there are several parts to the financial forecast. There's three main parts. Don't let this scare you. This is just kind of a breakdown. The sales forecast, which we've already talked about. The expenses budget, which we've talked about. The, the cash flow statement. What the cash flow statement is, is basically it's your budget sheet, but it adds financial tracking at the top of your budget sheet for the cash that you literally have on hand in your account, but you'll see that later because we're gonna get into that. Income projections, this is gonna be your profit, profit and loss statement or your financial statement. Those terms are sometimes used interchangeably. 
And then your assets and liabilities, that's going to be your balance sheet. So those are going to be things like property you own or um, any uh, mortgage, a mortgage that you may have or a vehicle that you may use for deliveries uh, for your business. But we'll get into that in more detail. Can you do financial planning without um, financial forecasting? In a nutshell, no, 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 you can't. Um, it's like trying to bake a cake without all the ingredients. You can guesstimate or you can have the ingredients and not the correct measurements. Even still, your cake's not going to come out right. So, and that's not going to fly with potential investors or banks or organizations such as the SEDC. And it's not going to help you. The more accurate your numbers and your information are, the better your financial planning will be for yourself, for your business, and for potential investors. <clears throat> Has anyone done financial forecasting before? And my mouth says again. I can't say that I did it correctly, but I've done it. <laughs> did you find it helpful at all? Yeah, I, I did. Um, um, for our, our piece of the pie with COVID, and I was going to ask you to speak to that, like if, you know, it, it we don't know what is going to happen and we it's very difficult to even discern what actually did happen so like for example like where don was saying she's pretty much been closed so now she moves forward like you know what i mean so does she, should we go back two years or what what's the best advice on that well i know they're gonna ask you to go back three years about two to two to three years so i mean you can't change that history i believe in Keisha, you can chime in here. I believe that banks and financial institutions will take COVID into consideration. They have to, because everyone was impacted. Um, so, you know, your your past history is what it is. You, you can't change it. And like you said, COVID was a huge impact on everyone. And I believe that financial institutions will definitely take that into consideration because they have to. They I believe, to. too, that they're going to do that at a higher rate um, and for more people than they generally would have mm -hmm. in the past. So, mm -hmm. like, people that may have had struggles in the past just because they had struggles and weren't um, maybe uh, as business uh, astute as they should have been, they're getting the second chance. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, this is another opportunity for them to kind of get it together, have another course. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then when you're doing your forecasting piece, I would base that more, I would lean more towards your average year to to use your numbers more so from your average year than say from the COVID year, because that's not going to, give a pretty it's not going to give an accurate depiction of the performance of your business in the future based off of the COVID period right so kind of like with the taxes they allowed it's analogous but not quite the same they did the reach back where they allow people to use their AGI or their income from 2019 instead of 2020 that type of a thing because what we've seen with COVID is not going to be typical of what your business has done over these 15 years. So when you're doing your the forecasting piece and the planning ahead and trying to show growth or how you think that, you know, your business will grow moving forward, I would lean more towards the pre-COVID or, you know, find some middle ground between the two because this is just an estimate. So the most accurate estimate you can give but you you understand what i'm saying is uh, here's a question I, and i think I, I know i've asked this in the previous webinars is everyone tracking doing their budget tracking some way somehow even if you're not using the budget sheet even if it's a notebook is is everyone that's in business have some method of tracking your income and your expenses 
Those of you that are new, folks, can I just uh, interrupt again? Um, Those of you that are new, if you don't, you know, contact Keisha. Ask her who you can get in touch with. You know, maybe it's Charlene. Maybe there's somebody that can help you get on board with this. Because the sooner you get on board with it, the much it's so much easier to get. You know, to learn it, and you know, you want to know what's coming in, what's going out. And for some of you, I'm sure it's you know, you've been preaching to the choir. But those of you, I mean, it's a lot to learn. You think. Oh, you're going to go in, you're going to make money, you're going to pay your bills and whatever is left over, you're going to keep for yourself. There's so much more to it than that. So if you're not really sure, just talk to keep, talk to somebody. Um, it's nothing to be embarrassed about or, but just learn that piece of it because it's so important. And especially now, you know, and, and especially now that you are being given, we're all being given a uh, a bit of a break now because of COVID. So Mm -hmm. if there's a time when you haven't been doing what you should be or as a business owner, now is the time to get on board. I mean, we've been doing this again for 16 years. There's always something to learn. And so, you know, my husband and I were always on these, these workshops to see what we can pull from them um, Mm -hmm. to learn more. So, so thank you. Thank you for, thank you to Keisha and thank you Charlene for you know what you're doing but um those of you that are out there you know don't be afraid because the the longer you take you the farther you get behind oh then you're going to be like (laughs) freaking out (laughs) so get on board they got a lot to tell you thank you for that Don and that was actually the inspiration this uh, I I won't tell the whole story but I called Keisha about something else getting some information for my small business and it learned it leaned it it turned into well what do you do and i said well i do bookkeeping and financial organization for small businesses and she was just like we need some of that because people are intimidated by the numbers and we want to help them get past that intimidation and so that led to this series of workshops that's so true that's exactly what led to this series of workshops. So um, you made several good points in that. And here's the thing. I said this before, you can know that you're making enough money, like you're in the green. You may not know how green you are, but you know that you can make all, pay all your employees and pay all your bills and, and be okay. But it's like swiping your card. If you don't track your, your business finances, it's just like, playing a Russian roulette with your account or with your business. You know, you might swipe that card one time and the money's not there because you're not paying attention or maybe you put too much money in this area when it really needed to go into that area. And, you know, now you're in a situation. So it's just really important. It's really important. It's it's not enough to know that you're making enough to be okay. And you need to know how to make it better. You need to know how to shift your funds. You know how need to know how to use that information to grow your business and to further secure your future. Because we're all we're all in business. We want to help people, and we you know we are following our passions. But at the end of the day, we want to make money. We want to make money. We want to make a profit to build a legacy for our children, secure our futures, financial freedom, take trips whatever it is it means to you. So absolutely, it's it's important to know what's going on with your business finances to a T. Because as I've been saying, your business is your baby and you need to take care of it like you would one of your children. So what will you need for your financial forecast? What you need to do rather. Very similar to the budget tracking sheet, you need to have all your financial statements in one place because once you get started, you don't want to have to hunt around for information. You want to have everything in front of you so that you're ready to go. Once you have all that in front of you and you have you're ready to put your data in, you want to make a decision about your projections. Do I think I can increase my sales by 5% or 2%? You know, what's reasonable? for the way that my business has performed in the past or the way that I want it to perform in the future. 
and you want to be realistic and so if you're not sure where to start google it google it there's google is your friend if there's something that you don't know and you're not sure of or you know how much this costs or what's the typical uh, business rate of growth for my particular type of business google it that information is there and then once you have all of that down then you're going to do your balance sheet and we're going to go through each one of these so again we talked that there are three statements that you need to create the financial forecasting plan and this is just a recap an income financial statement and if you don't know that's how much money that's coming in going out it's kind of it's a summary from your budget sheet though it's a summary from your budget sheet templates provided a cash flow statement shows how your profit will be made and a balance sheet and helps to predict your liabilities assets and equity again templates that were sent out earlier today to you guys for this so we're going to jump right into the profit and loss income statement or the financial statement and this is just a summary again that you're going to that you use your budget sheet all of this information is on your budget sheet and this is basically just a, a year's time or more if they want two years or three years this is a summary of the information from your budget sheet for at least a year so you can literally copy and paste or you know add your your totals up and you're going to put them on the profit and loss income statement is everyone familiar with the profit and loss income statement or the financial statement the you the term is used in interchangeably this isn't completely foreign to anyone is it no is that one of the did you give us this template yes that template is provided as well does is that from last week yes and it was sent out again this week too if i'm not mistaken okay okay yes mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. so it's literally literally this is why i said the budget sheet if you look at the budget sheet and you look at this all of the categories are pretty much the same with with very very little variation so I won't even open this. I won't delve into this because I think this is pretty straightforward. But if you have questions, stop me, let me know, and then we'll open it up and play in it. I really want to spend most of our time in the financial forecasting sheet because it is huge, but it is user friendly. So I want to make sure we have time to get, with, get to that. So next we have the cash flow statement. And this, there was a template provided for this as well. As I stated earlier, this is pretty much your budget sheet. Same categories. You have your exp your income here at the top, your expenses here at the bottom. All of the row, I should say everything on all of the templates we have provided are customizable for your business. So um, if you don't start on January 1, if you start in June, that's fine you can start wherever you are in your your planning but the cash flow statement is a statement that summarizes the amount of the cash and cash equivalents entering and leaving the company the difference between the budget sheet that we provided and this cash flow statement is this part right here the cash on hand and you're going to in this part oh lord in the first square here you're going to put, you know, if you have $5,000 to start, that's what you're going to put there. And as you enter your, your numbers here in cash sales, receipts, loans, that's going to carry over into each amount for you. The three main components of the cash flow statement are cash from operating activities, cash from investing, and cash from financing most of us will live in the operating activities which is the most common you know that's your payroll that's your equipment that's your your cost of your goods sold investing that's more of a a stock type of a thing so that's that's not ap ap applicable excuse me to your average small business owner and cash from financing activities so we're just going to 
mainly focus on the cash from operating activities because that's the, the area where most new small business owners in this particular audience will live. So the cash flow statement going a little deeper into operating activities, just some of the things that that includes, that's receipts from sales and goods and services, interest payments, income tax payments, payments made to suppliers, like cost of goods sold, salary and wage payments, utilities, rent, anything that you pay to keep your business running and functional, uh, consumers. Um, I won't deal touch any other utilities because that's a different story, but there's so much going on right now. But anything that you spend to keep your business functioning and operational, those are your operating activities. And like Charlie, so that's pretty much Charlie, Go ahead. Can I ask quick question. So with those expenses, do we typically record them in the in the time frame they're billed in or the time frame they are paid? So like, for example, consumer's energy, right? So you receive mm -hmm. a bill for August, but you don't pay it till July. Or heck, if you're running behind, you pay it in August. So do mm -hmm. you record that when you've paid it or when you accrued it? I would record it when I paid it. So on the like cash. You can, it, you can do it either way, but if you do it that way, then you have to be consistent with it. So I would advise it to minimize any confusion or I would I would record it when I pay it because that is at that time when the money is leaving your account. And does that change at the end of the year? So like when we're going in December from December to January or no? No. Okay. It may be the December's bill, but if you're paying it in January, then it came out of the finances that you had in January. Agreed. Thank you. Yeah. If I can add something to that, if um, Tammy, then you would be accounting on a cash basis. If you do deal with the way that Charlene is recommending, that's considered the cash cash basis of accounting. Thank you for that, because that is exactly the word that was escaping me. Yeah, I learned that there's a button there in QuickBooks: cash basis or accrual. So the cash basis is where we mm -hmm. want to be. Okay. And it, accrual would be what is the definition of accrual? Just real quick, if if you could help me, is that like if you are like billing people out? Is that kind of how that works? That's kind of how you stated before when you asked, "Do I when you account for it when it comes to you, as opposed to when you actually pay it?" You understand what I'm saying? I do. But whatever method you choose, you need to be consistent. Just make a quick comment on that again. I think that a cash basis would be better for small businesses because if you do it on the accrual basis, then it leads to could be a little bit more um, transactions and stuff going on with that. It could get a little bit more complex than a small mm -hmm. business probably would like to see. Absolutely. All right. So. Moving on from the cash flow statement and at operating activities. The third and final piece of um, information you need for your financial forecasting plan is a balance sheet. And this is different than the budget sheet, and this is different than the cash flow sheet. This is where you talk about your assets and your liabilities. This might not be, a lot of these categories may not be applicable to you and your particular business. If it's not, then you just don't enter any information. But I'm gonna use Dawn for an example. She says that, she said, she let us inform us that she owns her building. So that would be an asset. That's property right here. And so she's going to have information there. Correct. Goodwill is when, yeah, see, but for me as a small business owner, I'm home based. So I don't necessarily have a commercial property or, you know, a dwelling 
outside of my home office. So that's not applicable to me and that's okay. I don't want you to think that every category is going to be applicable to you because it will not be. Right. You mm -hmm. just fill in the information of what's applicable to you. If you are unsure of what they're speaking of when they say leasehold improvements, Google it. Now, I will yeah, say that in the, in the balance sheet that I template that we have provided, I went through and put definitions on things that were not obvious as a note, but I'm going to show that to you all as well. So the balance sheet, basically all assets, all liabilities. And, you know, the basic equation as we show here, assets equals liability plus equity. And um, just giving you guys some more basic definitions. Your assets are everything that a company owns from cash counts to furniture and property to vehicles to inventory. That's everything. Liability is money that the company owes. You know, if you have a loan and you're making a payment on that, a credit card and you're making a payment on that, that's what your liabilities are. And your equity, of course, represents the money that you would have if the, the basically the value of your business at a, any point in time, not necessarily money in the bank, but the value of it with your building and your cars and your equipment. What's all that worth? And that's your equity. Any questions on that? And I'm going to open. I'm going to open the balance sheet. I'm going to open the cash flow sheet. And this is the financial forecasting worksheet. This is just a snippet of it. This is just one tab. There are several tabs in this spreadsheet and I'm eager to get into it because I don't want you to see it and get overwhelmed, but it's, it's really good because it takes all of the information that we've already talked about. As you plug it in, it automatically does the math for you and it has the tabs for one year and then it has tabs for years one through three which is usually the requirement for again many financial institutions and organizations such as the scdc they want to see a history they want to see a track record and if you're lacking some history then they want to see you do some estimates with the forecasting moving forward so without further ado i'm going to stop the share so that i can switch Gears. Okay, so this is the 12 month cash flow. Again, as you guys can see, or if you don't remember, if you haven't had a chance to look at the budget tracker sheet, the budget tracker sheet is basically this. All of this down here, budget tracker. The only difference, the and this is information you're going to update as we suggested weekly, weekly. You know, when you, you have all your sales receipts and your invoices and your, your expenses, you want to go in once a week. And if you sold, let's say you made several sales. Now, and I want to remind you guys who may have missed the first couple of uh, webinars. When you're into, say you have the cash sales or receipts from anything that you sold, product or services that you sold, say you have five receipts for $20 each, right? Um, you can either enter $100 here or you can hit equal. Whenever you wanna add multiple things in a sale, you hit equal 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20, 20. And this is just a refresher and a tip if you're not familiar with working in Excel and it's gonna, do that math for you and it's going to carry that information over to the next cell and let's say i started off with just to show you guys how the math works and the numbers are going to change don't worry about what it's doing here moving forward because all those numbers are going to change as you enter your information in for each month so let's say i started off with uh, four thousand dollars i have a question real quick yes that the 12 month cash flow was that last week's downloads? I'm not finding it. That That's this week. The cash flow was not sent out last week, I don't think. So, yes, as you enter information, like I said, this is 
your budget sheet. This is all information from your budget sheet. The only difference is here now we're accounting for the cash that you started up with and what you're making and or losing every single month. And as you enter numbers, it's going to adjust. Your cash on hand in January and in February, based on what you made in January and all of your purchases. Say I made, I purchased a printer for $400. As you enter this information, it's going to automatically update your spreadsheet. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I did not create this. This is a template that I found on the SCORE website. It is free to all. So if you lose this, you can um, just look up 12 month score, 12 month cash flow. But there is an analogous spreadsheet um, template that's available in Excel, but it's not quite as user friendly as this. So it has the instructions here for you, which is what I loved about this template. So any questions, go ahead and play with this. Again, all everything here is customizable. So if you want to say, instead of saying cash sales here, you want to say number of customers, say that you're a beautician and you do hair. You can change these categories, but this is all your money coming in. This is all your money going out. And you can customize these categories however you see fit. If it doesn't apply to you, don't use it don't use it and again if you don't if you're not quite clear on what a particular category is google it so this is our balance sheet and it allows you to account for your previous year and your current year so you can kind of see a year over year um growth or what have you. So I'm just going to put some numbers in here just so you guys can see how this works. Say I had $5,000 in cash last year. Say, you know, because of COVID, you know, I maybe only have $4,500. Um, say I have. Is the time frame on this at end of year or in any given time? At any given time. You tailor it to whatever works for you, whatever your fiscal year is. You know, your fiscal year may be from may not be from January to December. It may be from July to June. Um, so you, whatever you can and you can change that here and you can um, all of this is customizable. So you can specify that here. Here you put your company's name. I just use Willie's Widgets. Don't ask me where I got it from. It was just a good general name. Um, so yeah, whatever you can make it match your fiscal year. So some of these things I felt like were pretty straightforward. The cash, I didn't put um, an explanation there or investments or inventories, accounts receivable. That's money that you expect to come in from services or products that you may have billed for. But when you see this little red triangle, that means there's a note there um, to explain it to you. So if you want to see the note, just hit edit note. Actually, no, you don't even have to hit, hit edit note. I want you to see it. So let's open it up. If my mouse would. There you go. So I went through and anything that I thought might be a little fuzzy, I put a definition here for you. So that little red triangle means that there's a note there with an explanation or a definition for you on this, um, <clears throat> this balance sheet. So I did that for each of these. And if there's anything that maybe is not quite clear to you and I didn't put a note on it, Google it. Like you would literally Google equity and other investments on a balance sheet and it'll give you the definition. But again, the balance sheet is just your assets and liabilities, which gives um, financial institutions and investors, potential investors, a better picture of the value of your business and what it's worth. This is not about cash flow at all. 
And also, I don't know how you would say it, Charlene, but I mean, I have found that using uh, my POS system, which I use Square, that mm -hmm. that has a lot of built-in information that mm -hmm. I wouldn't normally, you know, when, when I first started out, um, I just used a manual um, cash register. So I just had tapes and tapes and tapes that, you know, I took the sales off sales tax off of all of them and you know it was done very um old school and rudimentary and and god i liked it like that but uh i filled up the form easily and i was always in on time and then the, you know this techo stuff came and then anyway but um but what i found is that using square or any of those other systems i mean that that's what i'm familiar with it takes care of a lot of mm -hmm. your income that and and now you can actually use them for some of the stuff you can use them for your whole system like quickbooks mm -hmm. but um you know it tells you what you owe in taxes and mm -hmm. you know all kinds of other stuff but yeah if there's any newbies out there you know if you're going to do a cash system you know that's kind of nice um but, you know, really, if you want to keep track of stuff and you want to see, you know, how you did in the last year, the year before that, and the year before that, you know, having a, a point of sale system like that is so helpful. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw that out there. And, and it take it fills in a lot of those holes. Yeah. Technology is your friend. Aren't you glad you jumped on board, Dawn? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so much, it's so less manual and it saves you time <laughs> and it saves you brain energy. It's, you know what, and that's that's a very common problem. As business owners, you're busy. You're not just busy right. running the business. You're busy taking care of your families. You're working yeah. the business when the business isn't even open. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, like, the yeah, new day exactly. might not be open, but that doesn't exactly. mean you're not working for it. And you may have a full time job and you might have your grandchildren and your family like you're yep. busy. So it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of discipline to get into that habit. So, you know, I have um, a client that he would usually wait until tax time because that's what he did before he had me. But because mm -hmm. he has me now, I don't get his information once a week, but I get it about once a month. So I'm like, bring me everything. Just bring it to me. You don't have to do anything to it. Just bring it to me. But even that's hard because he's busy. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's hard for him. But when you have someone like me or your husband on to hold you accountable and say, hey, we got to get this thing done. It'll really bless your life come tax time. It really, really will. So well, thank, you, thank for that. you for that input. I, I appreciate the engagement. We have a smaller group this time, but it's it's much more interactive. I love the engagement. Thank you guys for that. So are there any questions on the balance sheet right now? No, we're good on this so far. And again, I encourage you guys to check your emails, open these up, play with them. If you have any questions, reach out to myself or Keisha or what have you. So the balance sheet is like I, I want to say quite possibly the most intimidating part of the process for me. This is Tammy. Um, mm -hmm. Only because it just seems very accountancy type things of which I am not. So uh, is it, I mean, is it really just plug and chug? Because so I, I have been using QuickBooks mm -hmm. and then, you know, when I just push that balance sheet button, it, it, it always balances. I mean, but you know, the numbers aren't quite right just yet. Cause I got to, you know, fidget with it a little bit, but mm -hmm. how does that magic happen? So, so, so the balance part, I guess, is what confuses me because as a new business owner, I do owe people. And mm -hmm. so I don't feel as if, you know, so how can I make this? So we're not struggling financially. We have money in the bank, of course. But then when mm -hmm. we do the balance sheet, the assets and the liabilities and the mm -hmm. equity part, that's what's kind of confusing me because I know and understand that or someone told me once that. It should always balance. So your liability, your assets and your liabilities and equity on either side has to balance. That confuses me. 
Um, but but why does that confuse me? I don't know. I just maybe I'm just refusing to grasp it or what? Does anyone else struggle with that part of the balance sheet? How it always balances to zero on the call or is well, it's because you always have that equipment. You might be paying for it on your mm -hmm. liability side, but you have that asset on your other side. So mm -hmm. that balances. You might owe someone for your product on your liability side, but you have it on your shelf on your uh, asset side. Yeah, I think the part that key that is making making sense to me is when you said if you liquidated it, right? So like the, if you take that that coffee on the shelf, right? If you sold it mm -hmm. all of it today, then the liability would be then paid. So that's how it balances. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, same thing like with a house, like, I mean, like building. if you sold it, if you liquidated, is that how that works? Because that's what confuses me is the balance sheet. I can't, I can't get it in my head. Yeah. It's like if you have an equity loan, if you take, you go to get a loan on your house, you, you might owe $30,000 on it and you go to get an equity loan, you have equity in it. They say you have equity in it. It's because you can sell it maybe for a hundred thousand. So you got $70,000 worth of equity. So then that's where it gets put in on the equity. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm answering this, but. No, you're fine. Go right ahead. You're doing a great T job. Tammy, I'm just Tammy, what, what, it's fine. <laughs> what kind of business do you have, Tammy? Are you the one so with the coffee house? Yep. Yep. So the same oh, as you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you're not owning a building right now, correct? No, not yet. Mm -mm. Okay. So you don't have that. You don't have equity in a building i mean you might have it in a car if you're if you're putting your car into your business you know if you you have a business because you're doing deliveries you know you might owe some money on your car but if you have equity in it charlene jump in here you tell her no i i don't think there's i think you pretty much hit the yeah the I nail mean, head, which is why you know when you go back to the equation assets is equal to liabilities plus equity that's right. how they, you know, the, the two sides of the equation have to balance. Yes. Yeah. So I think I'm missing the equity piece. That's the part that, that I guess that's making more sense to me. So like yeah, and it's, it's a house or a car, right? So even mm -hmm. though like I have a car loan, so let's take the business out of it. So I have my car, I drive my car around, I own it, I'm making payments on it. And so a, as, so as the, as the liability goes down, the equity, you know, balances out. Incre it. Yeah. It yeah. increases a little bit. I mean, cars are hard because cars right. usually don't have as so much equity, but usually houses do or property. So, um, but yeah, you want your, you want whatever you purchase, you put that on both sides of your balance sheet. So if you purchased it, you got the product on one side for twenty dollars, and you owe twenty dollars. So you put so that like on my the liability done. side. Mm -hmm. So like my equipment done, like my espresso machine and that kind yep. of stuff, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you owe five thousand for your espresso machine, and that's on your liability. But you have a machine that's worth five thousand dollars. So, you know, it's balanced. Tammy, do you understand it? Tammy, do you understand that that equipment is then an asset when you purchase mm -hmm. those type of things? That's on the asset side. Yeah, yeah. I guess I was just thinking it didn't become an asset until I until I completely paid for it. So like, no. What, what she just said about you know my espresso machine, which mm -hmm. I actually have paid off at this point, but that it doesn't. You know what I mean? That so because I have it, I either I have equity in that, so that makes sense to me now because it's mine. Even yep. if I'm making mm -hmm. payments on it, it's still in my possession. Right. You've already acquired it. So you've already acquired the equipment. So you're going to put it on the books at that time when you acquire right. it. Right. right. Even though I'm still making payments to it, yeah. I have yeah. it in my possession. That's That makes sense to me. Right. So the liability, the, the equipment is on the asset side, and then the liability would be the payment if you finance that espresso machine. And then, you know. Right. And I guess okay. that's the part. That's the last step that makes sense. So but once it's paid off, though, it's an asset equity on the other side, right? Because I could sell it at any time for a full price. Right. Because so I right. 
Uh huh. If you own, you own it, you purchase it, or even if you still own on, you could say, "I want to get a new machine. I'm gonna get rid of this one. Maybe you sell it for more than it's worth. So then right. you acquire some equity in that machine by per selling it. If it's you know you owe twenty five hundred, you sell it for three thousand, or you know something like that. So then you acquire equity in it. Right. That um, makes sense. Because mm -hmm. now I can sell it because I don't have to pay. Out yeah. Once it, it is, on once it. it's in your hand, Tammy, it's an asset too. Right. Whether you owe money on it or not, because you can sell it for hopefully what you paid for it at least or more. So I mean, right. that's where you have to, you know, you have to be a smart uh, business person in that you make sure that you purchase items that are, you know, at the value that they should be at, you know, that they're not less than what you're paying for. Right. And so like, so like, for an example, just like, so I was it Tanisha who had the photo the brick and mortar photography. So like all of her cameras and lights and all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. that's her equipment for her choice. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And that yeah, would be right. her, equity. her equity. Okay. That makes sense. So, so all of those equipment cameras and lenses and all of those things that will fall under the asset side. When you, anytime you purchase inventory, I mean, um, equipment in your business, all those equipment and those type of things, they're assets. And your, um, your accountant should always be amateurizing those. So you should be taking a little bit of money off of those, um, and writing it off each year as you pay down. Tammy, if you have any other questions about the balance sheet, just reach out to either one of us. But Dawn and Keisha, I'm, I'm, they try, I didn't have to say a word. They hit the nail on the head for you. So, um, and as okay. you stated, QuickBooks will generate that for you. You might have to do some adjusting, but it will generate that for you. That's one of the beautiful things about QuickBooks. But it is a plug and play once you, you know, have your information it's literally a plug and play all right so now we're actually going to jump into the actual um financial forecasting spreadsheet and it's several tabs it's several tabs but don't let it intimidate you i highlighted green the tabs um that i thought might be most useful for you just for year one but let me share so you guys will see what I'm talking about. So again, this is completely, and I'm reaching over, excuse me, you guys, to see the screen here. Um, so this spreadsheet is completely um, customizable as, um, as well as all the other spreadsheets here. Oh, come on, mouse, cooperate with me. You would put your information here or who's ever preparing it for you, your company name, whatever month that you start in, and it's going to transfer that over to each sheet. As you can see here, Susie Q. Brown, Bling Things. So this is your starting point. And this is kind of like... Um, almost like your budget sheet, but this is more of a a financial planning tab like it's it's kind of a combo with of, of everything of like your financial statement and your balance sheet because it has your assets but it also has your operating capital but it also has your so sources of funding so if there's any of this information that does not apply to you or if you don't need this information because you're an established business owner um just modify it to your needs and it gives you some standard depreciation numbers here uh, for real estate buildings for leasehold improvements so say you're leasing uh tammy say you're leasing your coffee shop but you decide to put in new floors um that's a leasehold improvement any equipment that would be your um espresso or your cappuccino machine a lot of this stuff is straightforward and the information that you're going to put here is going to roll over to the applicable tabs. So let me just start with the layout of this spreadsheet. Let's see, it's huge. It's huge. Um, 
but it has directions here, which I really like about this. It should be locked. All the tabs should be locked. I mean, unlocked. But if you try to type something into a tab and it doesn't, and it you right click and you see that it's locked, the code is one, two, three, four. But I made it a point to go through and unlock all of the tabs. But stranger things have happened when you send things over email. Things change sometimes. So mm -hmm. they give you your starting point. You're going to enter all your information here. Payroll year one. Again, this is just kind of like if you have QuickBooks, you can put this information right in from there. However, you track your employees. Um, if you're an owner and you pay yourself, you give yourself a salary, which many business owners do. You're going to put that information here. And it gives you some basic standard numbers here, like for your Social Security wage base limit, tax information. A lot of this is just standard information. If you don't have employees if you don't pay yourself then this is not applicable to you don't worry about it but you charlene to, uh, yeah. just a quick question okay Absolutely. so if you're going to do an owner's draw but you're not going to use your owner's draw for your own self but for your children how do you do that how do you put that in i would still put it down as the owner okay because you're allocating it to yourself, but then you're doing, you know, you just okay, and then giving it to your kids. Yeah, you're redistributing okay. your allowance. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so, this next tab is analogous to um, this is payroll year one. This is payroll years one through three. So, say I put. A number here and then I put 1523 here. I want you to see how um, it's going to carry that information over hmm. here. It's going to carry that information over here. Um, but I highlighted the, the year one tabs green. Uh, to make it easier for you guys to know this is where you're starting at. And then as you get into the additional years, then you go over to the yellow tabs. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So I, I I highlighted the green just to give you guys a starting point. Like you're gonna start here. Otherwise, you okay. And that's all it. set up. And that's all set up for us. Right Absolutely. Now. Mm -hmm. So we have payroll year one, and then years one, two through three. Same thing with the sales forecast. There's year For 17, one. 18, and 19. Oh my God, I love you, Charlene. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and so this is it's the, it's the same format here. This is your sales forecast year one, and then years one through three as well. And as you enter your information here, let's say, uh, product one, as I change this information here, it's going to change it here, but I want you to see that. So let's just say bling coffee cups. You notice how it changed here? Mm -hmm. Now, this spreadsheet is beautiful. I'm telling you, I don't know if I could have made it better myself. And that's what I do. I create spreadsheets and databases that's my full time i don't know that i could have done this better nice. myself don't know that i could have done it better myself and as you enter the the information it's going to update it for you um and let's say um bling ink pens if you if you have more than one product let me say that if you only have one product you're going to stop right here and Ooh, say ten dollars. No, we're gonna say twenty dollars and twenty-five dollars for the sales per unit, and say it costs you ten dollars for the cost of goods, and that's your margin per unit. Say in June you sold forty units, and July you sold fifty units. You're gonna see all of that information. Come over here 
No, that's year two. I'm sorry. It won't come over here, but it's gonna. So now that's showing that you made $12,000 off of those? Yeah, no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. It didn't carry that information over. Okay. But it did but carry you it know over what to... to do to make it happen. Yeah. Oh, Lord, what did I open? What time is it? Okay, it's 7.38. We, st we still have time. But as you enter the information, oh, I went to the wrong sheet. Hello. It's going to carry that information here over from year one to year three. And it's going to do the math for you. Hmm. So it's going to give you all your totals here. The number of units you sold overall or, you know, year to date. Your total sales, your total talk cost. It's just, it's just it's done. It's doing all the math for you, from you entering in your numbers here. And that's why I say you really you just have to play with it. It's going to give you all your totals over here, and it's going to carry that information over. And I'm just randomly putting in numbers. Your spreadsheet, of course, won't have any numbers, but I kind of wanted you guys to see how it works. So this is the, your sales forecasting piece, though. This is where you start. But you know, if you're going to a bank, you would show them years one through three here. This is this is that piece. This is your balance sheet. Go ahead. I wanted to say that. Um, so if like you were coming to SEDC and you're a startup business and so you don't have um, financial their numbers already. So that sales piece is what allows you to forecast. What do you think your business is going to do mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. those first three years? Yes. So that's the and I say that to individuals who come in, you need forecasted numbers. So that's what that means. Um, that spreadsheet and that tool allows you to forecast your sales um, for that particular item. So like if you have more than one item that you're selling, then it gives you the option to put in, you know, the different ones. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a great tool. And so because this, this, this again, is a, not something that a lot of individuals struggle with or don't really um, understand um, what forecasting uh, means. So but if you play around with it, um, I think that you could come to a pretty good understanding as to, um, you know, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to forecast and say, what your business is, what you're saying your business is going to do down the road. Absolutely. And here it gives you an, a place to put your growth rate. This is really important. You know, if you don't think a 10% growth rate is reasonable, either it's too high or too low for your particular um, line of business you can adjust it and say you know i think i can do 20 percent in year from year one to year two or um and then maybe 10 percent from your year two to three year three this is important you need to know these numbers if you don't know what it should be for you that that's um if you don't know what it should be for your line of business or what's reasonable google it what's a reasonable percentage of of growth for coffee shops in the first year or the second year, what's the average year of growth? And then look at your history. If you don't have any history, then use that average rate of growth. Uh, so yeah, this is is this this is important right here because that's going to determine these numbers here. It, they feed off of that. That's how it's doing the forecasting. Well, based on you know if your business is going to grow in twenty percent. Um, over the next year, then here is what that math looks like. But again, they have instructions here for you, which I love. Again, if anything, like I said, they have room for up to six products here. If you only have one product, just put one product or test it out with one product. This is your balance sheet. Analogous, the same exact balance sheet that I already showed you that we talked through. It's just in the realm of this spreadsheet. So you can use it here, or if you just need a balance sheet and you don't need the rest of all of this information, then you know this can stand alone or as part of this spreadsheet. Coffee. Tanisha, do you have a question? 
Yes, I do have a question. So what about um, people who have, or like a restaurant, or like me, like I have several different packages or package pricing. I know you said it holds up to six different somethings, but products, yeah. Products, yes. Mm -hmm. So when you, oh, with your, um, then you will put your packages here. You know, package one, package two, package three, if 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 that's how you choose to do it. But it only holds six, correct? It does only hold six. But are you familiar with Excel? I am familiar with Excel. Okay. Are you comfortable with copying and pasting? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I would suggest, but here's the thing. When you make this change here, you have to make like, so... Um, insert right and you have to copy everything i can't see my monitor so i have to mm -hmm. um, my external monitor you would have to copy everything and then you know do your renumbering uh -huh. and do that as many times as you need to but here's the catch this information is used further on down in the sheet so wherever you see the product information mm. you have to insert that information you have to copy and paste that as well okay you understand what i'm saying you can't just put it in this you can't just add here mm -hmm. you have to add it wherever you see these product lines being used okay you'd have to have add it there or just think of a different way to possibly group your packages. Group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And undo is your friend. Undo is your friend. <laughs> undo is absolutely your friend. So that's the balance sheet. It's analogous to the, the template that we already provided to you. It's just in the realm of this this forecasting spreadsheet. So whatever you put here is going to tie into other parts of the spreadsheet to give you a really good picture of where you are and where you want to go. <clears throat> this is the operating expenses sheet. Pretty much analogous to the, uh, no, this is the expenses portion of the budget sheet. So this is just all money going out, which is the same, um, the expenses portion of your cash flow sheet. The categories are the same, advertising, commissions and fees, contract <clears throat> labor, and these categories are customizable if they're, as always, but if there's um, a particular category you don't need, don't use it. You don't have to delete it. You just don't have to do anything with it. And again, as you, um, you know, say so you spent $100 on advertising and, and well, $199 since that's what I typed. And let's say you spent $50 on legal services and $30 on office expense and supplies. It's 20. I'm just entering numbers because I want you to see how it's going to add it. And you're going to do the same here. And, it's the, and it carries that information over here. So that's your year one. And then if you said, okay. A 3% growth rate. I expect a 3% growth rate on my expenses. You know how things tend to go up every year, but you can change this. I guess this is a standard number, but if there's a different growth rate for your particular industry, then go ahead and, and research that and put that here. Um, and yeah, it's going to carry that. It's going to show you what the 3% growth rate would be. That would be $103 on advertising in 2022 at a 3% growth rate if you spent $100 in 2021. So um, I'm sorry if I'm rushing you guys, but it, we're getting short on time. So I just wanna make sure that um, I give you at least a brief introduction into each tab. And again, this is your operating expenses, year one, which is why it's green for you. And this is years one through three. This is cash flow. Analogous to the standalone cash flow sheet that we provided, it's just again in the realm of this forecasting. 
uh, spreadsheet for you, and it's your your beginning balance. So you start off with five thousand dollars. It's the exact same sheet. It's just housed here, and it's gonna it's it's gonna give you a little more information here when your net cash flows, your operating cash balance. It's gonna give you some pretty detailed information. If you don't understand something, Google it. It's gonna give you all the information that you need. If you still have questions, go ahead. So quick question, where do you make um like a correction? So like, for example, like you, you mucked something up or you forgot it or whatever. So let's say your cash is off by, I don't know, a thousand dollars. How do you make a correction? Do you just correct it and notate it? Yeah. Like, so if it should have been um, $4,000 instead of $5,000, so you literally just change it. But if you want to note that you had to make a correction, then you can do a new note or a new comment. Yeah, so like, let's say you got super busy and you didn't look at your books till, you know, tax time like Don and that <laughs> and me. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I thought it was, you know, it should. Wait, have and me too. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, so like it should have been a balance of ten thousand dollars in April, but it's really only you know seven thousand. You just make the correction like you're doing now and notate it. Mm hmm. Because sometimes what we think should happen and what actually happens absolutely are two different things. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you can and undo as your friend, and if like I said, if you realize. And you're going to do that. You're going to make with anything that you have to manually enter is subject to human error. I can't stress that enough. So if your numbers are looking a little funky, then you have to, you know, take a look and say, oh, I put 500 here and it should have been 50. Um, so these formulas are only as accurate as our data that we give it. I mean, or, or I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm being as just realistic as possible here we're all friends right or mm -hmm. you know i'm not quite sure where the money went you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i'm not quite sure where some of it went because it was a bit of a crazy whirlwind and, and obviously that's not a habit that's a one-off kind of thing Absolutely. if you need to make an adjustment mm -hmm. I mean, it, like you said we're human it is what it is mm -hmm. so it was three months ago i didn't quite know where the money went so but i got to get back on track mm -hmm rotation and get back on track right absolutely and i'm not yes. talking hundreds of thousands of dollars or anything just you know minor things. no no understandable and even if you were you'd be surprised how i used to do i was a, a financial analyst for a corporate a corporate financial analyst for a lighting company and they do it with millions of dollars they make adjustments all the time so yeah it happens in big and small business you are not alone you are not alone. Even with the best tracking and, and record keeping, sometimes, you know, things can get lost in the shuffle. And then, but there's a way to account for that, which is a, but as soon as you see it, you correct it. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then this is, this is cash flow year one, same spreadsheet, but cash flow years one through three. Same thing. Lots and lots and lots tabs, y'all. <laughs> this is the income statement year one, analogous to the income statement that we provided to you guys that stands alone. Um, same information. Again, it, it carries over here your product lines. So you notice Bling Coffee Cups and Ink Pens. So, um, oh, I'm forgetting, not Tanisha. You know, this is where you would see all your different product lines here um, spelled out. And again, like I said, this is your income statement or your profit and loss statement. And um, those two terms are used interchangeably. And um yeah same thing here if any of these operating expenses don't apply to you don't use them if you need to modify one modify it but realize that if you modify it here you got to modify it here because this is the income statement years one through three it's going to carry over the information from 2021 
and you know 2022 2023 for your projections balance sheet again we won't dwell on that here and what this is going to do this this break even analysis which a lot of times banks want to see that and financial um, financial institutions want to see that this is going to automatically calculate you don't have to enter anything here you have to enter anything here that it, it pulls all the information from all the other tabs that you have put your information in so um Same thing here with the financial ratios. As you put all of your information in, this is going to update. As you, if you click on it, if you click on a cell, it'll tell you where it's getting the information from or what the um, what the equation is. So you're not entering anything here. This is all fed from the other information, from your balance sheet, from your income statement, from um, your profit and loss from your budget sheet. All of that information is going to automatically feed here. And you notice when I tried to make a change, it told me that it's locked. So you should not get that um, warning. If you get that warning, then what you're going to do is go to unprotect sheet and the code is one, two, three, four. And voila, you can make changes. Now I'm not going to make any changes to that formula because well, I could because I can always undo it and I can put equals 20. But that's not what belongs there. Anywhere you see a formula means you're not supposed to be putting information there. And if you wonder if a cell has a formula, you're going to. Oh, you do have to put your um, sales growth here, sales growth here if you want to. But what I love is that just like I put notes, I didn't put these notes here the creators of this template put these notes here so it's going to explain to you what each of these are but again you don't generate this once you have your spreadsheet full of information it's going to fill this in for year one once you have your information for year two it's going to fill that in for year two um so you don't have to worry about that and this is another summary don't really have a lot of time to get into it um because it is 755 but i want you guys to just and this is your cost of goods calculator. Now this, you can use this if you want to. This is you fill in yourself. Um, you know, however many cogs, I mean, however many spindles it takes to make a Willie's widget. Um, this is part of your um, business planning piece. And my ring light just said, forget me, huh? It's my ring light is set on a timer. <laughs> And it's off again. That's okay. And your amortization and depreciation schedule. All of this is actually if you filled out that portion, the portion of this spreadsheet that's relevant to this is going to do the math for you from, it's going to feed in from your starting point. And you click on starting point and it's going to bring you all the way back here. I know that was really, really fast. We had some technical difficulties. A lot of this is really straightforward, but I really just want to encourage you guys to play around with this. And if you have any questions, give me an email or reach out to Keisha. She'll reach out to me. Um, Google it. Um, I don't want to keep you guys here all night, but any questions? I know I went through that really, really fast, but the best way for you guys to get familiar with this. If you haven't done it before, is to just play around with the spreadsheet and dive in. Put in some test numbers or put in some, start putting in some of your real data that you have right now for year one. That's why I made the year one tabs green. Start with year one and start getting a feel for what your numbers look like. It's okay. Do you offer one-on-one -on -one consultations? Can we reach out to you for an appointment? Absolutely, absolutely. And I will put my email address down at the um, in the chat. And Keisha has some of my business cards in the SEDC office. And we are in wrap up now. Just I just wanted to share the presentation again, just for one second. Um, I do have a quick question um, before we wrap up. Does anyone um, know why that 
um, forecasting um, spread, she was so prevalent, how she did the start and then she did the year two and year three. Why is that so important? Does anybody know? Um, and it's in order to see your uh, business potential. Yes, in order to see what your business could possibly do. But that's what the financial institutions ask for. When you go to the financial institution and you're looking for funding, you say you want to get a loan, you're a small business. That's what SEDC looks for. And that's what the financial institutions look for. So mm -hmm. she's giving you the tool um, when you say, you know, you need funding. And you, when we ask you for your financials, that's exactly what the bank or the financial institution or SEDC is looking for. You know what? I'm going to highlight this rep because she is just doing a good wrap up for me right here. I'm going to highlight that red because she's, and we've said this a few times, but yeah, that's a good way to bring it home, Keisha. That is required for securing loans and funds. They want more than one year of information. They're going to want at least three, one way or other, whether it's history, a loan, or history combined with forecasting. They're going to want at least three years of information. And for startups, just to reiterate, so like for myself, I've been business in one year, so I would use my one year and then forecast out, mm -hmm. like I would also use industry standards. Because so mine is, I'm obviously a little funky, right? So I have one year in, it was a COVID year. So I would also kind of incorporate some industry standards for trend, upward trends. Because yep. obviously, if you're going to secure financing, they, they want to see an upward trend. Mm hmm yeah, correct? you want to be like, yeah, I'm going to lose. I think I'm going to lose 2%. Of yeah, why would you want to invest? Like, I don't want to do that. You don't yeah. always, you always want to show growth. Oh, Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. That was excellent. And so I put a few Excel tips in here. Um, I'm going to make this power. I'm going to make sure Keisha gets this PowerPoint and it can be emailed out to you guys. Um, so. I didn't I don't think I sent the second one out because it it was pretty much the same as the first one, but we just spent most of our time in the budget spreadsheet. Um, we appreciate you guys tonight. We appreciate your time and patience and just your engagement. Um, we are a small but mighty group. I think this is the best and the most engagement that we have had to this point. Again, these this workshop and the previous two will be available. They're available on YouTube, but Keisha's going to give you all that information. Well, we want to say thank you on tonight to Ms. Charlene for providing us this great information on these three sessions. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, I'm sure that everybody gained something on tonight, but like Ms. Charlene said, if you have any further questions, um, you can contact um, Ms. Charlene or myself. I do have her business cards and her contact information if you're um, interested in um, seeking some services out with her um, as well um, for your small business. And um, again, I'm here um, with SEDC to here to help you, to guide you, um, get you all the resources we can um, to possibly help you with your small business. And so, if you're a startup, if you're a new business, if you're an existing business, um, definitely come and see us. Um, you need some resources, need some funding, um, just looking which way to go. So um, please give us a call. Um, my phone number is 989-759-1395. So that's my office phone number, as well as you can look me up on the city's website and um, give me a shout out. So Anything we can do to help, we're definitely here. All right. Well, thank you, guys. All thank right. You. Well, thank you. thank you. Thank you. And good night. Thank you, ladies. All right. You guys have a blessed night.